Once upon a time, saber-toothed predators roamed the planet, their enormous fangs slicing through massive prey. These impressive features made them top hunters, yet today, lions, tigers and leopards rely on far less dramatic dentition. So what happened? Were saber teeth an evolutionary dead end, or could they have given modern big cats an edge? Our story starts in the prehistoric ages with the formidable saber-toothed hunters. The superstar of this club is Smilodon, a genus of saber-toothed cats that lived up to the end of the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago. Smilodon was built like a wrestler, weighing as much as 600 to 750 pounds, or 272 to 340 kilograms, and muscled like a compact lion. Instead of the long tail that gives modern big cats balance, Smilodon had a bobbed tail, a sign that it wasn't built for speed chases, but for power. And of course, there were those trademark canine teeth, sword-length fangs that could grow over seven inches long. But Smilodon was not alone. In fact, nature experimented with saber teeth in multiple forms. There were many species of saber-toothed cats across different eras, and even some non-cats that converged on the same fearsome look. One remarkable example is Thyla cosmolus, a carnivorous marsupial from South America. Yes, you heard that right, a saber-toothed marsupial cat, more accurately a marsupial predator that wasn't closely related to true cats at all. Thyla cosmolus lived about 10 million to 3 million years ago and was about the size of a jaguar. It evolved long, stabby canines that fit into bony slots in its lower jaw, almost like having built-in sheaths for its dagger teeth. As apex predators, saber-tooths had it made, until they didn't. Roughly 10 to 11,000 years ago, around the end of the last ice age, the saber-toothed cats, along with most of their megafauna prey, disappeared. Saber-teeth were clearly advantageous in their time, they evolved multiple times and helped bring down Ice Age behemoths. But would those same traits be a boom or a burden for a predator in the modern world? For hunting really large prey, saber teeth would be a specialist stream. A modern big cat with extra long canines could, in theory, dispatch big animals more quickly and efficiently. Consider a lion today taking down a Cape Buffalo. A dangerous Cape Buffalo can gore or trample lions during the struggle. With saber teeth, a lion might kill such a large prey faster by slashing a critical artery or the windpipe in one precision bite, rather than holding on for minutes to suffocate it. A quicker kill means less thrashing around and lower risk of injury to the predator. In essence, sabers could function like biological switchblades. One well-placed stab and the fight is over. In the Ice Age, this meant a saber cat could fatally wound a two-ton mammoth calf or a giant sloth in seconds. In today's context, a similarly equipped big cat might more safely take on large, tough prey like buffalo, moose, or even elephants, if it dared, by targeting weak spots with its elongated fangs. Another potential advantage is intimidation. A predator sporting enormous fangs would strike fear at first sight. Of course, evolution doesn't care about looking cool, but a bit of intimidation might make competitors think twice about challenging a saber-toothed lion for a kill or territory. So why don't any modern cats have them? Because along with those benefits come some serious disadvantages in today's world. First off, saber teeth are fragile and specialized. They're big but not unbreakable, more like thin steak knives than sturdy daggers. If a saber-toothed cat bit down in the wrong spot, hitting heavy bone, its mega canine could crack or snap. That's a catastrophic injury for a predator reliant on its fangs. There's evidence from fossils that some saber-tooths had broken canines, hinting at the risks of their lifestyle. In a world where prey is smaller and quicker, a saber-toothed hunter might be tempted or forced to tackle a wider variety of prey increasing the chance of a bad bite on bone or a desperate attempt to hang on to a fast-moving target. Modern big cats often have to be generalists. One day a tiger might catch a deer, another day maybe a bird or rabbit. Long sabers could actually get in the way during such hunts. Imagine trying to catch a small impala or a warthog with two oversized knives protruding from your mouth. Not exactly convenient for biting and holding on. Those fangs that excel at slicing might make it harder to clamp down or deliver the kind of crushing bite needed for smaller prey. 
Another downside is that saber-toothed cats likely needed a very specific fighting style. They probably wrestled prey down with strong forelimbs before using the sabers for the kill, as their jaws weren't built for the typical bone-breaking bite. A modern cat with sabers would also need to commit to that approach. This means less adaptability. It can't easily switch to other killing methods without its key tools becoming a liability. If the environment changes or the preferred prey becomes scarce, a saber-toothed predator might struggle to adapt, as Smilodon ultimately did when its food source dwindled. In contrast, today's big cats with their normal canines are more versatile. They can crunch bone, suffocate throats, or deliver a swift neck bite to sever the spinal cord. Evolutionarily speaking, the saber-tooth is a more narrow strategy. Devastatingly effective in the right scenario, but more vulnerable if things don't go as planned. A fun analogy. Having saber teeth is like driving a high-performance sports car. Great on a smooth racetrack, or in this case when hunting megafauna on open plains. But take it off-road and you might crash. Regular big cats have more of an all-terrain vehicle approach. Sure, they're not doing 200 miles per hour, but they can handle a variety of conditions. In evolutionary terms, flexibility often beats specialization in the long run, especially in changing environments. The case of the clouded leopard is an interesting hint that the potential for longer canines is still around, but also shows the limit. Clouded leopards, Neophilus nebulosa, have exceptionally long canine teeth for their head size, about two-inch canines in a cat that's only the size of a small leopard. Proportionally, that's the largest of any living cat, reminiscent of a mini saber-tooth. They use these teeth to grip and subdue prey with a precise biting technique. However, clouded leopards didn't evolve into full-fledged saber-toothed beasts, likely because their environment and prey didn't push them further. They inhabit forests where agility and climbing matter. They prey on animals that a well-aimed normal bite can kill. Their extra-long fangs are like a halfway point, useful but not so extreme as to require overhauling their whole lifestyle. You might say the clouded leopard flirts with the saber-tooth design, but never committed to the full saber-cat lifestyle. Nature gave it slightly exaggerated canines, found they worked well for its niche, and stopped there. No need to fix what isn't broken, and pushing the trait to an extreme might have caused more problems than it solved. While no modern big cat has saber-teeth, that doesn't mean saber-tooths are gone forever in the grand scheme of life on Earth. Evolution has a way of repeating itself, if the conditions are right, a concept called convergent evolution, which we've already seen with things like Thylacosmolus mimicking saber-tooth traits in marsupial form. So could a saber-toothed predator evolve again in the future? The answer is a definite maybe. Given the right environment, it's possible that the long fang design could make a comeback. Let's set up a hypothetical scenario. Sometime in the future, large herbivores become abundant once more. Imagine a world where, say, human influence diminishes, perhaps far in the future or post-human, and ecosystems get a chance to produce new megafauna. Perhaps giant bovines, oversized deer, or even quasi-mammoth elephants roam some continent freely. These creatures are massive, tough, and present a rich food source for any predator that can take them down. A regular-sized tiger or lion might struggle with such behemoths, too dangerous to tackle without specialized equipment. This is exactly the kind of setting that could favor a saber-tooth adaptation again. A population of big cats, or even some other carnivore like a bear or something we can't imagine, the preys on these giants might gradually evolve longer, dagger-like canines to pierce throats and bellies more effectively. Over thousands or millions of years, as those with slightly longer canines have more hunting success and thus more offspring, the canines could get longer and longer. Until, voila, you have something that looks an awful lot like a new saber-toothed cat. Interestingly, some scientists have noted that we might just be in a saber-tooth gap in Earth's history, a temporary lull between eras of sabered predators. Long killing fangs evolved so many times in the past 20 to 30 million years that there's every reason to believe it could happen again. In fact, one zoologist, Per Christensen, pointed out in 2012 that the clouded leopard showed some early saber-toothed-like traits. 
He mused that given a few million years and the right pressures, the descendants of today's clouded leopards might evolve into proper saber-toothed hunters, slashing the throats of the mid-sized herbivores of the future. It's a speculative idea, but not a crazy one. After all, the clouded leopard already has elongated fangs and a lot of flexibility in its jaws. If, say, larger prey started to dominate its environment, natural selection might stretch those canines further generation by generation. It's hard to imagine evolution getting the chance to create a new saber cat in the near future, when habitat loss and human competition are such huge factors. If anything, we're losing large predators rather than gaining new ones. However, life has a long timeline. If we look millions of years ahead, humans might be gone or have changed our ways, and ecosystems could look very different. It's not impossible that some future feline or feline-like creature could end up filling the saber-tooth niche again if big herbivores are around to warrant it. Another route to a saber-tooth revival could be through genetic engineering or de-extinction, but that's science fiction at the moment. There's talk of bringing back mammoths. Who knows, maybe one day someone will try to resurrect Smilodon from DNA. But natural evolution is a more fascinating and likely path. It has happened before multiple times, which strongly suggests it wasn't a fluke. Sabertooths weren't some evolutionary mistake. They were a peak adaptation for their time. And when similar conditions arise, evolution often rhymes. In essence, given the right environment, one where having supersized canine teeth gives a predator a big advantage, saber teeth could indeed make a comeback. It might not be in any living species we know today. It could be a future offshoot of an existing smaller cat, or something entirely new that occupies a niche we currently don't have. The key ingredients would be the presence of large, hard-to-kill prey, and the absence of easier ways to kill them. Under those circumstances, those incremental steps towards longer and longer teeth could be favored again. For now, however, we live in a saber-tooth-free world. The big cats we have are marvelously adapted to their niches without needing XXL canines. But it's intriguing, almost comforting in a way, to know that life has the template for a saber cat filed away in its repertoire, ready to dust off if the opportunity arises. Who knows? A few million years from now, Earth might host a new saber-toothed predator that would make Smilodon proud. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.